Let me know. Take that next step. Say to me, another person, say, take that next step. Say to another, say, take a step forward. Then take a step forward. This morning I'm charging us. I'm not supposed to be ministering, but so it's on duty, but to travel. But as I waited upon the Lord, you know, in the course of the night, you know, the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, take that next step forward. And I will be, you know, sharing from the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Then stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again by a yoke of bondage. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again by a yoke of bondage. I read again. Stand fast, therefore, hold your ground, therefore, be unmoved, therefore, in the confidence of freedom that Christ has afforded us by being raised from the dead and do not be entangled again by any yoke of bondage. What that scripture is saying, you are stand firm on the promise of God, the assurance of victory that you have in Christ, and do not stagnate for any reason whatsoever. Do not be encumbered again. Do not allow any issue or circumstance of this life to retard your advancement. Then do not be entangled again by any yoke of bondage. And Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press forward. Say, I press forward. Say, I press forward towards the goal of the prize of which God has called me upward in Christ Jesus. I declare to you this morning, brothers and sisters, that Christ has set us free. We have liberty of advancement and we are not subjected to the yoke of adversity. The freedom and the power that brought Jesus up from the grave is resident in you as a spirit that endures you. The Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is valid in you, that is the one that enjoys you, then that spirit will quicken your body. It will energize you. It will infuse you with something that cannot make you stagnant or be subjected or be enslaved to any form of encumbrance. Then the spirit, the life giving, the momentum, the force that broke open the grave, the force that rolled away the stone that men rolled over the tomb. He said, if that spirit is ready to be you, then there cannot be any limitation whatsoever. Then that spirit, even when your body is dead, can generate something as a force that quickens it. Then that spirit, when you are discouraged, can ignite passion for advancement. That spirit, when you are beaten down, will not enable you to be crushed, but to arise on your feet and charge. There's nothing that will limit or hinder you from stepping in the direction of purpose and destiny. A man called Paul, the Bible says that he was persecuted and he was stoned outside of the city. His mandate was in the city. The Bible says that he was taken. Circumstances and issues of life took him out of the city and stoned him and left him for death. But there's a spirit that was in him. That the spirit is in you. The Bible says that immediately they left him for death. The Bible says that he arose, he trusted himself, and walked back into the city. I don't know if you understand what it means to stone somebody and to live for death. It is not a man that just threw stone at him. The men gathered around him and they stoned him. Let me paint a picture of how they stoned people in Israel those days. When they stoned a man, they somehow stoned him. That the quantity of stone with which men treat as such men will become a heap, such so that the man becomes buried under that stone. The Bible said that they stoned Paul to death. What it meant was that the heap of stone with which they stoned him buried him under the weight of such stone. But the Bible said that there was something in him that arose without a scratch, without bleeding, and trusted itself and went into the city to pray. I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you understand what we carry in Christ Jesus, there is no force in this life 
that can hinder your counsel. There is nothing that will not cause you to continue to press on. It was Paul that was writing the Philippians. The one thing I always do, regardless of what life throws at me, one thing I always do, regardless of the event that unfolds, is that I forget the path and I press forward. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying moving forward is easy. The word, the verb used in that verse of scripture is that I press forward. Pressing means that something is pressing against you or you are pressing against it. And you understand what I'm saying? I cannot press emptiness. What I will press must be something that has inflicted itself against my efforts that requires me to subject. The one thing I do, I forget what's behind and I subject the present. I said to you this morning, arise and subject and subdue any situation. You have the capacity to. There is nothing more that God can do than what He has done for you. God is in you. And that is what the Bible says. And that is the only ground for glory. The Christ in you, the what? The hope of glory. When you're asking God to glorify me, Lord, help me, God is saying, what you have inside is all the air that can render. That was why Paul was writing. He said, I can do all things through what? Through Christ. Say to yourself, I have Christ on my inside. Say, I have the abilities of God in me. I cannot be limited. I say to you, brothers and sisters, take that step. You are a free man. Keep moving forward. It's like it is for freedom. Christ has set you free. Do not be entangled again by any yoke of bondage. You are a free man. Keep making progress. Those that make the journey of purpose is yours to complete. Don't stagnate. Don't be static. People that work with me understand that I don't get stagnant. Whatever the circumstances, my philosophy in life is to keep moving. The more adversity multiplies itself, the more I advance against it. The more my brain can be breaks. And all I want to know is how can I solve this situation? I cannot press forward. But I understand it is not by my power nor by my might. It is by a function of the Spirit of God that is in me. I charge you this morning, don't stagnate. Don't abandon the process. Don't abort the vision. Don't cut short the mandate. Don't destroy the purpose. Destiny is yours to fulfill. Press on and move forward. It is real for me to wake up in the night and on TV to want to watch. But while my spirit was restless, waiting upon the Lord for this message this morning, I went to the room and took a cup of tea. I went to one end and I switched on the TV. I switched to TV stations, Christian stations, trying to listen to a preacher preach to me because I felt I needed a lesson. Unfortunately, I stumbled on a movie and I decided to watch. It was a one man movie. It's been a long time I watched that movie. That a single man acted from the beginning to the end. And this message was reinforced by that movie. The title of that movie is mine. You guys go and watch it. And that movie projects to me the life that many of us live. That this was a soldier that was sent on a mission in the Sub-Saharan region. And suddenly, as he was going, he stepped on something that he perceived to be a mine. A mine is an explosive that is buried in the desert and the trap for the enemy. If you go for conventional warfare, the enemy will plant some bombs and bury them on the ground so that when the enemy is coming and they run on that place, they will be exploding themselves. So he stepped on an object called a mine. That was what he thought it was. And he could not move forward because what it means is that once he takes his leg off that object, what happens? It explodes. So he stood on that object, saying that should I move, should I not move? He called for help, and they told him there's nothing they can do, that the nearest earth to him is 52 hours away. 52 hours is how many days? About three days. That means he has to stay on that position for 52 hours. Yes, indeed, many things happen in 52 hours. Because it was a desert, hyena came, they bite him. The terrorists came, they shot at him. He could not move because it's even worse 
to move than to survive what? The virus. For 72 hours he was there. And I was anxious. Many things happened to him. Night fair, day broke. Night fair, day broke. He was there. He suffered as much when he urinated in his water bottle to drink because he was dehydrated. He suffered. And somebody came to him. One of the terrorists. He said, You said you are stepping on a man. He said, Every step is a risk. Take the next, keep moving. He said, No, this will be my last step. He said, Every step to be your last step. Take this step. He said, No. For the reason of fear and the reality of what he imagined, step on that man. When it was almost 52 hours, some animals came, tried to drag him apart. He survived, he fought, he killed some of them. He was still stepping on the man. Suddenly, he felt dizzy. And his strength was gone. He could no longer retain his strength. You know, he knelt down just on one spot for almost three days. His strength was gone and he collapsed. Boom. And his leg went off the man. He thought he was going to explode. Only for him to realize that nothing actually happened. You know what he did? He dug the iron. It was a kind of leaf. <laughs> What you are afraid of are false evidences that appear real to your imagination. It was a can of milk. I don't know, milk. Nothing was actually there. The affliction was imaginary. The stagnancy was imaginary. When the man appeared to him, he said, You don't want to take the risk because you are afraid of the event that will uh, unfold. He said, Yeah. And my dad had the wife at home. That man said, Every day might be your last step. Just take this step. I wish you had obeyed the man the first day. Some of the afflictions we go through are not necessary if we develop enough courage to advance against adversity. And when I watch that thing, I will, I will not watch it again. It was a kind of me. That is why many of us. What has made our destiny that makes is nothing more than a can of me. Some of the excuses, some of the things we bring up as limitations are illusions. They are mirage. They are not real. And my charge to all this morning is that take that next step in the midst of fear and danger. Jump ahead. If you have listened to me several times, I've always told you. That when I'm under that severity and severe circumstances, that is when I double down on my peace. That is when I sleep more. Because my philosophy is this. If a problem will kill me, let it kill me once in peace. A problem wants to kill you? Why should you be you in pieces? That is double loss. If a problem is saying I will destroy you, okay, I will go to bed. I bet when I sleep, come and kill me. I feel I will be unconscious when I'm dying. For many of us, the problem is still in Abuja. We are humiliated, we are weary, we are pooping on ourselves already. It's not even close. Many of us, we are not able to move forward into the fullness of God's purpose because we have more things of imagination. That is why the Bible says that the weapons of our work, we are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. They what? Pulling down some and what? Casting down imagination. Imagination is the what enemy that a man can have of him? The casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of Christ. What is the knowledge of Christ? That in you there is a hope of what? Glory. What is the knowledge of Christ? That you are more than conqueror. What is the knowledge of Christ? That you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. What is the knowledge of Christ? That we that you prosper and be in hell, even as also prophet. There are many things written in the scripture. For many of us who have been on this spot for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. With imaginary excuses. This is what God has told you to do. Why are you not doing it? We have 1,001 reasons. Like that man at the pool of life said that for 38 years. Jesus said, Do you want to get well? He said, No, I've been by he brought up stories why he cannot be get well. Even when the miracle himself stayed before him. Thank God for Jesus that persisted. That was patient to listen to his story. He was once that told Jesus that an angel that needs to come and stay at this one. 
He was not that Jesus that for 38 years. How can a man be as a spot for 38 years? Your imagination has not overcome and overwhelmed you. Even people that are coming to the same pool, you cannot talk to them or God them. Carry me here. Why here to 38 years? He was on the spot. Say to your neighbor, move forward. Say to another, let camp and advance. God spoke to Moses. He said, Dad, the children of Israel, that you have stayed too long on this mountain. I am not the woman that is keeping you here. God is not responsible for the state of your life now. God is not the one that is responsible for the state of poverty that you are in. God is not the one that is responsible for the state of weakness that you are in. God is not the one that is responsible for the state of disappointment, the state of shame you are exposed to. You are not responsible. Break calm and advance. And this morning, I'll be giving you a six reasons why you are not moving forward. And four reasons and four ways you can move forward. Six reasons why you are not moving forward. But before I jump into the six reasons, why you have not moved forward, let me tell us that you need to move forward in all areas of life. First, spiritually, you need to move forward. You need to take that next step of elevation. You need to take that next step that will cause you to grow spiritually. You need to move forward spiritually. You can't keep giving excuses why you are not growing spiritually. It is to your disadvantage. It is to your shame. It is to your destruction and devastation. Move forward. During service day, come and be sharpened spiritually. For prayer meetings, come and pray. For Bible study, come and hear the word. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. What you don't know, the reason why Satan is keeping you away from service is so that he can feed you with the information that can magnify his own in your life. If you are not listening to the word of faith, because you cannot shut your ears from voices, you will hear something. But you don't show up in service and you don't want your life to be stagnant, you will be. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when faith is built, courage is built. Courage translates into action. It is the word of faith that Caleb and Joshua had, and, and, and uh, it wasn't Joshua and Caleb, they had, and they said, we are able to go up to this mountain and possess it. It was the word of faith in here. You need to step up and step ahead in the spirit. Spiritually, you need to move forward and begin to do what God has called you to do. Somebody was visiting me during me and was asking me one question, a very powerful question. He said, sir, that is life in branch. I pause before I answer. There is life and illusion. I asked him a question. I said, what do you mean by life being an illusion? God well, realizes he just lost his mom recently. And all the assets and all the properties of the mom are still where they have. Nobody has thought it since the mom was buried. And the question I asked him, there is life in the ranch. I asked him, why are you asking? Then because he realizes, even if you become a doctor and professor, when you are dead, everything ends. I said, yes. For a man that does not understand the will of God and walk the will of God, lies and illusion. You will discover that at the time you have stressed yourself, struggle, and climb a ladder, you will realize that it leads to nowhere. So if you don't understand the purpose of God for your life, whatever you are chasing behind in frustration, whatever you become, will become a devastation. And I reminded him of the story of Steve Jobs. I know many of our Indian generation will not know who Steve Jobs is. How many of you know who Steve Jobs is? Steve Jobs was at one time the richest man in the world. Ahead of his days. Many of you are carrying up for the iPhone. That is the one, that is the owner of iPhone. His company was the richest in the US and in the world. But when he had prostate cancer and he was dying, then take away all his videos and give him bread. He realized suddenly that when he was at the peak of affluence and riches, he leads to nowhere. And I told him, if you live that kind of life, indeed, life is in the ranch. Life is an illusion. 
It is when you, what you discover of God's mandate for your life. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a man that found treasure in a field. And he went back and sold all that he had to do what? Buy that field. When you find purpose and vision for living, you have found eternal treasure. There is nothing worth comparing to it. But how can you find eternal treasure when you don't even know how to hear God? The faith comes by hearing. Vision comes by hearing also. Paul was telling King Agrippa, he said, when I was away to Damascus, he said, God spoke to me and said, I have appointed you and ordained you as an apostle to the Gentile. He said, oh, King Agrippa, since then, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He went through many things to fulfill vision. And when it's done, he said, I have fought in fire. Then I want to run the race. Then I want to finish. I'm just living like a mushroom. They are rise up today, and tomorrow is what? Don't live that kind of life. Wake up, spiritual. And get yourself. I like what I'm doing. Even if I don't have food in my house. And if anybody wants to look for my trouble, let them challenge. What I'm doing. Somebody was with me yesterday, and my wife said, Pass the comment concerning this mandate. I fled off. Do we think I will just got angry for no reason? But that is the main trust of what I live for. You cannot touch it, even my wife. You cannot question it. Praise the Lord. Physically, you need to step forward. When I mean physically, many of us, many things that we do, we are just on the same spot. We are doing the same thing, the same way. We need to step forward emotionally. You need to grow emotionally. Stop allowing people to tolerate you the way you are. You don't behave self-centered and selfishly, thinking that I don't care. That is me. That is selfish. Emotionally improve. Let people around you find it suitable to live with you. Step by step, take steps that like improve you emotionally. Develop emotional intelligence, relational skill. I heard the man of God saying in the week, when you pray for breakthrough and favor. He said, God sends men to you. How God answer the prayer of breakthrough and favor is what? By sending a man to you. But when you lack emotional intelligence, you make a ruin of doors that God opens for you. God has never come down and bless any man directly. He uses men. You are saying, God oh, bless you, prosper me. You will send men. For so by attitude and character, we make a ruin of God's agent sent to us step up. We need to move forward. We need to progress. And this is not what is done, it is what is done you know, unconsciously. It must be a deliberate stepping. How many of you walk while you are asleep? Eh? That's why the Bible says, awake, thou that sleepest, arise. If you take that step, that will improve your life. Search your neighbor. Take that step, that will improve you. Say to another, take that step that will improve you. In your career and ministry, take that step. Some of you have been carrying a credential for 20 years. It is wired. That is life to pay for your heart. And you're looking for a job. And you're asking, why is it that my mates, all oh, they are paying me 15000 Why is not 15000 they pay you? And I used to pity young ladies that don't know that count, time is counting against them. All those men that you are working about you, wasting time, just add 10 or 15 years to your age. You see how far many of them have gone, and you are here. They are begging you right there, now you are playing right and see. They are pity you. Just add 20 years to those friends of yours. You are playing snowcats together. And you are waking up in the morning, sleeping and waking up. How 20 years to both of you? The gap that we hear will be from Nigeria to Afghanistan. And at that time, you now be envious of them. Say he's too proud. He's not proud, they're not at the same level. They're the one that has not moved. 
is operating at his own level. So, ah, it was going out. She turned very proud. I greeted her in the market. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was you. When you are very mad. When you come and hug you. He will not hug you. Because the period that two of you are working together, you are the same level. Now, you step out of a jeep, smelling nice, and you are selling tomato. And you are telling your people, that is, that is my friend, or my very best friend. He is not your best friend anymore. They are living in the past. He is told me, I a tomato seller. Your friends are the neighbors beside you. She is a banker now. She has friends at management level. Say to your neighbor, move forward. Take that step now before it is too late. Many of you need to make some business decisions that will bring you into the purpose of God for your life. It is time we take these actions. Quickly because of time. Two reasons why you are not moving forward. Number one, fear factor. Many of us are afraid of uncertainty. We are afraid of how will I sustain the step I want to take. If I say I want to jump, I have ambition to go to university, who will sponsor me? If I say I want to start this business, how I will I sustain it? If I say I want to move out of the community, I'm speaking this prophetically, some of you are here, you need to move out of your present community. You were not born to live in Facebook and Facebook forever. Go and get the flats. There are some ways you cannot think of you live in Facebook. Sincerely speaking, there are some thinking you cannot think until you leave a particular environment. Am I lying? If you want to change a man, change the environment first. For God to work with man, he didn't just create him and put him in the world. He created a garden of Eden for him, a conducive, cultivated, well nurtured environment. When he called the land, he said, your father's house, and I will show you a land. When God wants to change a man, he changes his habitat. Some of you need to change your friends, change your associations. Fear. If I say I'm not befriending this one again, who will not be my friend? Cut short the friend first and see whether God will not bring you new friends. At some point, I made no decision. I told you how we used to go to Colonel Joint. I mean, I have to know the story. I changed my friends. I was lonely for a while. But thank God I changed my friends. Leave that environment. Make ambition. Many of you know where I live. I was living in the inside there. Very fun. And I said, no, I come so I said, I want to be in a different house. I took my wife to the place. My wife said, ah, how are we going to be paying for this place? Many of you are like my wife. Sorry, she's not here. I can say this. Don't go and tell her. How are we going to do this? I said, don't worry. God will suffer. You go, when we moved to the house, unfortunately we were given the house initially to move in. We didn't pay one cover. We moved into the house, the landlord said that we didn't pay, no agency, nobody. My wife just woke up in there. Hey, I said, what happened? How are we going to maintain this place? Ah. I said, what kind of spirit is this? I cast you out in Jesus' name. Don't infect me. I think we are almost four years in the house today. Nobody has that, 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 you are only your friends. Don't be afraid to take the step forward. Many of the ministers are here. When we say, when we're here, what did I say? Then we are moving on. You know what I said? We were looking for a place. Do we have one couple? Eh? Or there one error? Even to today, is there one error? There is still no one error today. Sincerely speaking, if we did not move, we will still be there. There won't still be money. What I'm saying is that the Bible says that either look at the wind, Shall not plant. He that look at the wind, ah, I want to go out for this race. Let me wait for the race stop. When will the race stop? The he that look at the situation shall not plant. You take steps. You make bold move. You face the fear of uncertainty and you conquer it. Many of you think that some of us are getting done, we have special privileges. What we don't have is fear. We don't allow false evidences to appear real to us. We are full of faith. Many of you are afraid of consequences. Many of you are afraid. If I start this, how will I finish it? Because the Bible says that better in the end of the day than the beginning. Begin first. 
and you know whether the end will be better. Be on the move. Many of us, we will sit down and we, it is good to calculate risk, but one thing I don't do, I don't calculate risk. The world has their principles. This kingdom has its own principles. What this kingdom is all about is taking the leap of faith. How will you explain a man that has the servant to go and serve water as wine? How will you explain that? How will you explain a man that told his disciples to sit down almost 50,000 people and all they had was five loaves of bread and two fishes? Many of you are like Jesus' disciples say, Jesus, it is not possible. Don't, don't go on, on, on a white chase, you cannot end. Then even if all of us are walk on, walking for eight months, we cannot feed this one. Number two is that many of us are afraid, are betrayed of past failures. Number one is fear factor of uncertainty and consequences. The second uh, reason is dread of past failures. And this combination is very deadly. The dread of failure of yesterday and the fear of tomorrow, they are very devastating things, at least a man. When I'm talking about the dread of yesterday, I mean regret of the steps you took yesterday that you think you failed. But then you're not mixing with the fear of what you are not sure about, it paralyzes your today. Is somebody following me? The dread of yesterday plus the fear of tomorrow is paralysis of today. And that cycle will continue. You know why it will continue? Because you will not be regretting tomorrow. Ah, if I had known that tomorrow would be like this, I would have acted like yesterday, I would just regret it. The cycle will not act again. The dread of yesterday and the fear of tomorrow is a very deadly combo that stagnates the man because of time. Present force of intimidation. That's number three. Sincerely speaking, many of you, you can share by experience that life is not fear. Sincerely speaking, life is still not what? Fear. Life is full of disadvantages. Your Lord says in this life, in your glory, for me feel like. In your body, feel like. For glory. Who can interpret it for me in English? Person will get end, you don't get car. Person will get car. You don't get that so line. This is what don't be in the show. Now so what? Like. Some people they when they say they don't even get air that can't. Uh, eh? And yet they have hope. The Bible says that they are in hope for a tree. Though it is on time and its root dry up in the ground. He said, but at the scent of water, water has not touched it. He said, at the smell of water, then it begins to pour again. Water has not touched. It's just, water is coming. Green leaf will be coming out. When water has not touched it, what will happen when water is not touched? Say, there is hope for me. Say, there is hope for me. So don't let the force of your current situation intimidate you. The reason why you are going through it's so that the enemy wants to catch you. He wants to intimidate you, to poke you. He wants to weaken you. I think of the book of Nehemiah. You know, uh, Nehemiah was talking about Samuel and Tobiah and the sponsor agitation against them. He said, they are doing this so that our hands can grow weak and we will not be able to build the wall. That is the essence of demonic and satanic intimidation. To weaken your resolve, to complete the task God has assigned for you. The Bible says that we take our watch, Nehemiah, said night and day we have sword on one hand and we're building with the other hand. Who does that? So that they can complete the world. Nobody has excuses whatsoever not to fulfill destiny in this life. Men that are born blind fulfill destiny. Men that are born crippled. How many of you have watched the video of Pastor Nick? He does not have hands, he does not have words. And if this man operates computer for you, you will shake. And you, you have two hands and leg, you cannot open my bosom wall, shame on you. You don't have to move mouse. And you are 18, you cannot move mouse in this computer age. Eh, I don't, I'm not going to say, who says? When there was 
running computer in this whole Nigeria. I was running computer in my brain, imagination. I was writing code. I was telling somebody in the week, he said, I want to go and learn that. I said, you know how to drive. He said, no. I said, me, I had learned driving in my dream. I said, I would not be sitting in front of a taxi driver. I said, it's different. I said, oh, you cannot drive. You should. One day I woke up and I suddenly was looking for my car outside. Suddenly I was like, ah, who could have carried my car? I just saw my wife driving me. I said, eh, hey, my dad wants to catch my car. Then when he refused to teach me driving, I taught myself. Today they are not going to drive this school. And when my wife is driving the car, in fact, when I see them come, my hand is to be like this. It's like they are both more to pass and pull it. How many of you have ever my wife's car before? The way she used to drive, I used to be completely. She moves like overtaking like anything. When she told me the other day I'm on my way to get I said, hey, God, let's pray. She went and came back. Number four, reasons why you won't move on. Current imaginary objections. In the nature is one thing, but self-imposed objection is another. That is one thousand and one reason you are giving yourself. Are you understand what I'm saying? One thousand and one reason you yourself are creating for yourself. My dear, move forward. Nobody to carry me. My dad, move forward. I have no relative. Everybody has abandoned me here for that eight years. But there was a woman. The Bible says that despite the fact that she was so unfortunate, every of her attempt to move forward made her to be a failure all the more. The Bible says that she had an infirmity and she took action for 12 years looking for solution until it was as though she had become impoverished by that experience. But she stopped moving forward. Did she say that because all the doctors have exploited me, she stopped looking for healing? Did she say because I have sold all that I have, I should go and commit suicide? The Bible that she kept saying to herself, she kept saying to herself, this time around, if I can touch the end of his garment, I shall be made old. The Bible says in the book of Luke that she kept saying to herself, she was not discouraged. A woman that has experienced failure for 12 years consecutively. And you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Consecutive failure for how many years? Yes. Condition multiplying for how many years? The Bible says rather that she getting better than she was, she grew worse. And this time around she was even exhausted. But there was something she had not exhausted. Say faith. Yes. Say courage. courage. And as she moved, that was the only woman in scriptures that God did not know when power left him. I mean this view that would go know all things. The orchestrator, I won't be up. We have sang this morning, for me, oh, yes, That was the only, she was not singing for what me. What she was singing, evil over, can you for oh, yes, all over for what I just. She was the one, she was definitely to God, Jesus. He did not allow objection. Valid, yes, we have valid objections. Objection like indeed nobody is here to you. Indeed, there are infirmities that. That all I can see are one of which you want. There are situations, but those are not valid objections, not what to take this step. Excuse me, when she thought Jesus, what happened to her? Eh? Do you know that if you not take that woman 12 years, she recover all she has lost in 12 years? Current imaginary objections. That is the reason you don't move forward. Like you're a young lady. What are your education? There's yeah, nobody that will sponsor me. Excuse me. Have you even you have you even sat for YMP? And brought your result? What you don't know is that opportunity only works when there is preparation. Yes, sir. Somebody can just show up. Ah, I want to sponsor five people. But ah, okay, let me go and sit for what? You don't even have the old level. When you have time. And that had a vision explosion, you know, and you are just saying it, eh? And I scored 350, 350 out of 100. Ah, no one is come, 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 come. That's why people, you're about to say, you're about to ship them. Who can help me compete with? You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're about to ship them, you're about to ship them. You're
bend down, put our load on my head. You know why people will not do that? They don't know whether your hand is strong for you to hold the load when it's on your head. So I need help, I need help, I will be like this. When people will help you eventually, they don't know whether they have the amount to waste. You are not making any effort. He did not a boy, was not two months ago, that left the he came to Lagos and was walking in traffic, was selling Ghana and water, and he saw prisoners walking, passing by, and she was giving the prisoner under the Naira, and they asked, why are you doing this? Said their situation is not worse, and I am here where I can also. They cannot also. He did not know that somebody was screaming in. That boy now is on full scale admission by Wick Banner. He all has an automatic employment. The man has fixed that a billion naira for him after he graduated. He said he will work in his company, one of his best companies. A man that led the village. He said there are eight children. He got tired. He said, Papa, we cannot be staying here. Let me go and house in Lagos. He said he had 2,000 naira to buy water. Out of the 2,000 naira, he gave 1,000 naira, 100 naira to, to prisoners. And somebody did do it. Excuse me, if he did not move from Oka to Lagos, we will be to Ghana. Eh? Was it fortunate? He only prepared for an opportunity. Number five. Force of opinion is the reason why you don't move forward. People's stories are experiences of failure. Many of us will enjoy tales, opinions of men. <laughs> oh, Shere, you want to do this? He has no food in the, in the pain. He has no food in the pain. That's the reason she said they set out of her husband up. Men's opinion. Public opinion. One thing I don't do is I don't subject my decision to public analysis. Public analysis will lead to destiny paralysis. Public work analysis will lead to what? Destiny paralysis. You don't subject your destiny to the opinions of men. If you perish, you perish. That is the language of people that succeed in destiny. Hey, 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 no. hey, in the night, I saw a vision. Should I do it? Should I not do it? You don't know where evangelist is coming from, whether she does it with you. Ah. And she, she, she has, as Peter Redis has done, and the bloodline. Uh, 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 eh? What is this? I beg, I beg, that was my dream. Eh? Reality is different from people, don't follow up. Public opinion, most of us have become paralyzed. We have become disactivated because of people's opinion. I'm not saying it's not the cancer, but I'm saying that be mindful of people's opinion. And number six, which is the last one, is complacency. Complacency. That is a state of self satisfaction. Some of us, we have nothing that is ginger in us. We are quiet as a quiet water. We are dead as a stream that has no life. I read, once read a hymn. Is that quiet sea has its own dangers? Marinas beware. It was a quiet sea that caused the devastation that Titanic was exposed to. There was, I tell you, this good one storm in your life. You'll be happy. Yes. But when everything is calm, cool, and collected, you may be wired for a devastation that you have no strength to handle. Why the sea was quiet, and the biggest ship in those days was sailing on the sea. They were partying with the sail, the sailor was melting because there was no danger near. The Bible says that the ship eat an iceberg, that's not the Bible story issue. That the sheep eat an iceberg. They did not even know because everything was quiet and rosy. It was too late. They just thought they some water as when you know what they can control. Many of us that are placid in this life. Your salary is 50k. You are applying your life for the next 50 years around 50k salary. Permit me to say, many of you are not ambitious. You are okay. Somebody that was collecting, at least in 1999, my mother's salary was 2.5. Excuse me, if you see collecting 2.5 today, per month, what do you think would have happened to her? 
life changes. The Bible says that life are in places. Men are in what sizes. Increase your size before the next phase of life run on you. It's a life I faces. Men are what? In sizes. There's a reality that is constant about life. It will be faced with change. For you, increase in size. So that you can fit the next phase. As I run off, four kids, you need to move on and go forward. Number one key is faith. Keep believing. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, is that we walk by faith and not by sight. Wait. Be limited by what your eyes can see. Operate by the light of your inner man. That one is far reaching. Faith. And I've told you how faith comes is by the word of God. It's by the visions of heaven. It's by the instruction of the Spirit. You have to know that I have the backing. When last did God speak to you directly from scriptures? Most of the time when I wake up in the morning, I'm discouraged. All I need to know, all I need to see is a light from the Word of God. You'll be as though I have been put on charge for 21 days. The Word of God. Then that word is a light. It's a lamp onto my feet and what? Light is onto my path. You cannot be loaded with the word of God and not have faith. You cannot. You cannot keep listening to the word of faith and not grow faith. Faith that is indispensable asset, indispensable ingredient for advancement. Number two is courage. Keep pushing. Faith means keep believing. Courage means what? Keep pushing. Confront and conquer your fears. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, you are more than what? Conqueror. In all of these things. Courage does not mean absence of fear. Courage means that you advance in the face of fear. All of us have fear. I still have my fears. The male conference is coming. I still have about 200,000 expenses. I have fears. But we let the God of God announce today that I don't come to conference. What did I say this week? I said, excuse me now. Everybody invite, let this all be full. I am confident that before Friday, something will happen. And if you happen, you will see it. Yes, yes, I don't need your amen. If you happen. Yes, if you happen. Courage is the only thing that makes faith to work. God spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. I think verse 8. He said, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. That is not in life faith, I mean. That's a, that's the word of promise. That's the word that provokes faith. But it said for Joshua, be strong okay? and be what? Very courageous. Said, for I will give to you the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Shall be able to overcome him. He said, but when you see them, Joshua was so courageous, even when God came, he challenged him. He said, Who are you? Are you for us against us? <laughs> that was a man of courage. The Bible says that an angel came with a blood sword. Who could stay here and say, I don't run? But this guy, because God has pumped him, has so overcome himself. When an angel showed up, what you should do is to bow down. He said, Oh God, I know you are not from this earth. Why are you for us for against us? But they just are better for you against God. You are the only grant before you always shoot. When was it so called on Mount Sinai? What did he do first? He always shoot. But this one said, hey, okay, come here. He will confront anybody. He was not intimidated. War surrounded Jerry was that we are bringing this thing down. He's a man of courage. Courage means that in the midst of adversity or position and things are not working, to stay there until it works. To press. Look at what Paul said. He said, I keep what? Pressing. He said, I forget what is behind. Number three is focus. What is number one? Yeah. Number two. Yeah. Number three is what? Focus. Keep seeing. Keep seeing. The first is keep believing. The second is keep pushing. Because it's what? Keep seeing. 
Continue to fix your gaze on the price. Jesus was not discouraged. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, that for the joy that was said before him, he kept his gaze on the joy, on the glory, on the price that was ahead. As a result of that, he kept pushing, he kept saying. Believe me, chapter 3, verse 14. He said, One thing I do, I press towards the goal of the price of the eye calling. Paul kept seeing the price. His motivation when they are studying him is the price. His motivation when he was being shipwrecked is the price. His motivation when he was being beaten is the price. The motivation when he could sing and praise God when he was in shame was the price. Are you seeing the goal? Keep your focus on anything you want to do. Let the goal be your motivation. Don't lose hope. Can we break it? The job will not be what I want, but my goal is what God has shown me. I have seen it. As long as I keep seeing it, that was why when God appeared to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he said, As far as your eyes can see, so he took him out. He said, Look at the stars of the sky. He said, Keep looking at this thing. That is how the mirror of your creation will be. Each time Abraham, when he was 19 years old, you know what he was done? And the Bible says that in Romans chapter 4, that despite the fact that his womb of his wife was dead, and even his own body was dead, he thought he was not really in faith because what? he can't see in the price. Every day you come out, how would I be weak in faith when God has told me my generation would be like this? Say to your neighbor, keep seeing. Keep seeing. Don't let the circumstance of life blow your vision. Keep seeing. And last. Motion. Motion. Keep moving. Are you understand what I'm saying? What is number one? Keep what? Number two. Keep what? Number three. Keep saying. Number four. Motion. Keep moving. Keep moving. As you keep saying, continue to walk in the direction of your objects. That was like the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Keep moving. Keep pressing forward. Don't stagnate. Press towards the mark and the goal for the price of the iconic kind of Jesus. Believe that still is a that I keep pressing forward. You failed yesterday. Get up and keep moving. You were wounded yesterday. Get up and be moving. You are disappointed. Get up and keep moving. Don't let anything hurt your movements. You are a bulldozer. And the only way Satan can overrun you is when he stops you. Yeah. Have you seen a 9 level moving on 120 km per hour and one demon will go and stay in front? Yeah. If you want to stop 9 11, what will you do? You will distract him first so that his vision can be taken off focus, so that he let the driver can apply brake. As you lose focus, what do you do as a driver? Who is the driver here? When you lose focus when you are driving, what do you do first? By instinct. You apply brake and you try to maneuver all the lane. Keep moving. In the days of doubt, keep moving. In the days of weakness, keep moving. In the days of adversity, keep moving. In the days you are not clear of what to do next, keep moving. In the days they are found, keep moving. Don't stagnate. I'm going to your feet as we begin to pray this one. You can pray the Holy Ghost, begin to pray the Holy Ghost. You say to yourself, I keep moving. I keep pushing forward. Circumstances not withstanding. Pressure not withstanding. I take the next step for my victory. I take the next step for the fulfillment of destiny. I press forward. If you can pray the Holy Ghost, can you begin to pray the Holy Ghost right now? Marco Shati Bogostala. If you cannot pray the Holy Ghost, just begin to say to yourself, I move forward. I press forward. I take that next step. I make that next move. In the name of Jesus, I can do all things to Christ. I am more than conqueror to Christ. Oh, I endure all things to gain the glory of grace that is in Christ Jesus. Continue to talk to yourself. Oh, I may be crushed right now, but I cannot be destroyed. I may be hard pressed, but I cannot be overwhelmed. In the name of Jesus, 
begin to talk to God this morning. Begin to talk to God this morning. Begin to talk to God this morning. Marco Shabi de Nebo Sali. Reke Kizabibo Shabi Nadani Yabasha. Reke Zenamo Shanana. I shall move forward. I shall not look back. My hand is laid on the plow. I shall not look back. Oh, the price is going by of me. I will lay hold on it. In the name of Jesus. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, pray. Lift up your right hands. Father God, I speak over this one. That by this hand I have lifted. Let new strength, new momentum, new grace be downloaded into their lives. In the name of Jesus. And I receive a new download of grace. Receive a new download of vigor. Receive a new download of strength. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy over you that going forward from here, you will go forward. You will press forward. You will break through. You will break down barrier. You will conquer opposition. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You will be glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.